Dr. M, welcome to my YouTube channel, My Good Study. I'm a trained only mental official surgeon and I'm here to help you out solve the difficult concepts of dentistry so that you can apply them in your clinical practice and also help you out in solving the difficult questions for your dental board exams. As you all know, we have already started with the topic of pediatric dentistry and today we'll be discussing about the local anesthesia. But before diving into the today's video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click on the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever I upload a video. Also, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram page that is official to study. The link has been given into the description box. I had been daily posting some questions. Do read those questions and answer them in the comment section so that you get an insight of how these questions come in your dental board exams. So, Let's get started for today's video. As you all know, there are many common local anesthetic agents which are utilized in the pediatric patients. The practitioner must know maximum recommended dose of the anesthetics which are used and then calculate based upon the patient's weight the maximum number of the cartridges. Now, the possibility of the adverse reactions increases with the concomitant use of these sedative agents. In this table, we can see three main agents, which is the lidocaine, the lepivacaine, and the prilocaine. And depending upon the duration of action, they are further divided. Now, let's talk about the calculation of the maximum dose in the cartridges. Now, this calculation is based on the guide of to the dental therapeutics, which indicates that some cartridges use or contain 1.7 to 1.8 ml of the Although many cartridges are labeled as 1.7 ml, the following calculations is based on the 1.8 Now, what are the key points that we need to make? First is obtain the patient's weight in pounds and then convert it into the kilograms. I'll be explaining it in the further slide about how do we calculate by example. Then you have to multiply the weight in the kilograms by the maximum recommended dose of the local anesthetic to obtain the maximum milligram dosage. Then you have to calculate the number of the milligrams per cartridge by the anesthetic by multiplying the percent of the, of the local anesthetic by times of 10, and then multiplying by the size of the cartridge, that is the 1.8. So let's see how the calculation has been done. Now here there is a 44 pounds, three pounds of the, the weight of the child. Now, it has been converted up into kgs by mathematics. This comes out to be 20 kgs. But this 20 kg is further multiplied by the maximum recommended dose, that is 4.4 milligrams per kg of the little kg, which comes out to be 88 milligrams. Then, as we discussed, it has to be multiplied with the concentration, that is the 2%, and also it has to be done 10 times. So, it comes out to be 36 milligrams per cartridge, that is the standard amount which is present per cartilage. Now, this 88 milligram of the maximum dose, which we calculated by the weight, it has to be divided by 36 milligrams, which is present in one cartridge. So it comes out to be 2.44 cartridges. Now, coming on to the topical anesthetic. Now, a good tasting benzocaine is a topical anesthetic is recommended. Now, benzocaine has a rapid onset of action. The mucosa is dried with the gauze and the topical anesthetic is applied for a minimum of 30 seconds. The usefulness of this topical anesthetic in children is debatable. Some authorities believe that placing topical anesthetic may cause more anxiety because the child has more time to participate, anticipate the injection. In addition, the topical anesthetic can trigger a conditioned response because the injection always follows the topical application. However, most clinicians use a topical anesthetic. Now, the local anesthetic techniques which can be utilized for the children. Now, there are various techniques which can be utilized. The first of all is for the mandibular primary molars. Now, this primary molars are innervated by the inferior alveolar lobe. So an inferior alveolar nerve block or the mandibular nerve block is indicated for deep caries, for pulp therapy, for extractions. In primary dentition, patients, the mandibular foramen is located lower than the plane of the occlusion. So mandibular block injections for pediatric patients are made lower than what is done for adults. 
but by number of the solutions deposited in the area of the mandibular foramen. And in the primary dentition, the syringe should bisect the primary molar on the opposite side of the injection. Then comes the lingual blood, the lingual blood block. Now, a small amount of the anesthetic solution is deposited on insertion or withdrawal of the needle during the administration of the mandibular. Then is the non buckle block. A small amount of anesthetic solution is deposited in the mucobuckle fluid just to do the most posterior. Then comes the infiltration. Now, some studies have shown that local infiltration anesthesia for primary molar is effective, especially for the restorative procedures. There is an increased probability for anesthesia failure causing local infiltration for bulk therapy and extraction procedures. Then comes the mandibular primary anterior tip. Now it is innervated by the inferior alveolar nerve. The infiltration that is used alone in the primary anterior teeth is effective for small curious lesions and for the extraction of the mobile incisors. Now the inferior alveolar block or the mandibular block, now this is used in cases that require regional anesthesia because some innervation of anterior teeth Others from the opposite side across the midline is advisable to supplement the mandibular block with the local infiltration. Then comes the maxillary primary molars. Now it is innervated by the posterior superior alveolar nerve for permanent molars and the middle superior alveolar nerve for the mesobuckle root of the first permanent molar and primary molars. So the infiltration, the local infiltration anesthesia is effective for the first primary molar going to the relatively thin overlying group. The local infiltration used alone for the second primary molar is less effective because of the thickness of the bone in the area. Then is the PSA nerve block or the posterior superior alveolar nerve block. This block is used for the second primary molars in conjunction with the local infiltration. A PSA is used for maxillary first permanent molar with the local infiltration applied to the mesobuccal root. Maxillary primary anterior teeth, the innervation is the anterior superior alveolar branch of the maxillary nerve. Now here, local infiltration is effective for the maxillary anterior teeth. Generally, the solution should be deposited close to the apex of the teeth to be anesthetized. Then are the palatal tissues, which are innervated by the anterior palatine and the nasal, nasal palatine. Anesthesia for most restorative procedures or minor extractions can be accompanied by first depositing this anesthetic via the free marginal gingiva. If needed, this can be supplemented by giving a palatal local infiltration in the area already enlarged by the anesthetic. The surgical procedures will require anterior and mesial palatine nerve blocks. These injections are quite painful and are to be avoided if possible, especially in pediatric patients. Now the complications of local anesthesia. Now there are various complications which occur. Now first is the toxicity. Now the maximum recommended dose of anesthetic solution should be calculated very carefully as we discussed previously in the video. Overdosage can cause the CNS complications such as dizziness, blood vision, seizures, CNS suppression and even death. Now, the complications can include the myocardial depression. Then some local complications, that is the lip or cheek trauma, because of new sensation of being numb. Some children either scratch their cheek or chew the lip or the cheek area. Parents and the patients should be warned of this possibility and the parents should supervise these children very closely. Should the patient traumatize the cheek or the lip, the parent should be should reassure that these lesions always be without complication. In addition, the description of the typical appearance of swelling, whitish yellow membrane should be given to the parent, and the child should be seen as soon as possible into the dental office. Some adjunct procedures can also be taken up, for example, the nitrous oxide station. Now, the psychological differences between children and the adults are relative to the nitrous oxide administration. The BMR activity is greater in children, the respiratory rate is high. We have higher risk of airway obstruction because of the narrower air passage, sometimes larger size of tonsils, adenoids, the tongue, and even more oral secretions. 
high risk of desaturation in children because of less capability to withstand on inspiration and less oxygen reserve. Heart rate is higher in children. Also, the BP is lower in children. The high, higher heart rate has a greater effect on the blood pressure. For example, when there's a decrease in heart rate, the blood pressure decreases relatively more in children. Then drug effects are also more variable in them. So the administration of nitrous oxide at levels less than 50% with no combination with other sedative or the narcotic is considered to be the minimum situation. Typically sedated patients may be temporarily combinative and coordinated cognition, sorry, the coordination impairment, but the heart and the lung function is unimpaired. In addition, the minimally sedated patients are able to communicate verbally. Now, the purpose of the nitrous oxide sedation, it is to reduce the fear, then to reduce the pain, then to reduce fatigue, enhance the communication, enhance the tolerance and help patient develop physically challenged, then also decrease the alveolar reflex. The minimum alveolar concentration for the nitrous oxide is also 105%. So, the minimum alveolar concentration is actually a measure of potency. It is the concentration required to produce immobility in 50% of the patients. And for nitrous oxide, it is 95%. Now, let's talk about the four plateaus of the anesthesia or the stage of analgesia. Now, the four plateau stages of this anesthesia is first is the paresthesia, that is the tingling of the hands and the feet. Then is the vasomotor action, that is the warm sensations. Then drifting like euphoria, pupil centrally fixed sensation of floating. Then is dream like state, that is, eyes closed but open in response to questions. Difficulty in speaking and jaws are open. Now, the preparation of the patient. The patient is in the reclined position. Then you can use the test show do technique, TSD, describe the sensations and advance to the patient. Now, the adult size nasal hoods do not fit the children, so smaller nasal hoods should be available. Now, the technique. Now, the technique basics are basically the bag is filled with oxygen and the hood is placed in the patient's nose. Total flow of 4 to 6 liter per minute for most children is utilized. So, the practitioner can check the bag and make the necessary changes. The percentage of nitrous oxide is 10 to 20 increments until a drift plateau is achieved and the patient is sharing at the seat. The injection is given at this time. The maintenance dose of approximately 30% is given during an operative procedure. Now, the nausea and the vomiting. With or without vomiting is most common complication of the nitrous oxide. This complication occurs with excessive concentration of nitrous oxide or an excessively long procedure. Nitrous oxide levels should be reduced periodically during the procedure, especially after the 30 minutes. Now, the signs of desaturation it is reminding child that he needs to hold the mouth open, a new response to the questions, the agitation, sweating, nausea, and unconsciousness. There is diffusion hypoxia. Now, when the nitrous oxide is discontinued, there is high outpouring of nitrous oxide from the tissues into the lungs. This can dilute the available oxygen in lungs. Although this diffusion hypoxia is very rare, patients should be given 100% oxygen for 3 to 5 minutes after the nitrous oxide procedure. Now comes the contraindications of this nitrous oxide procedure. Patients with blocked gestation due pneumothorax, pneumobectonium, sinusitis, inhibited non compliant airspace can lead to increased pressure with airway. Then is pregnancy. With significant emotional disturbances, patients with drug dependencies, some upper respiratory infections, patients being treated with the pleomycin sulfate, then a physician consultation should be obtained for patients with significant medical condition, such as obstructive pulmonary disease, with digestive heart failure, sickle cell disease. Also, these patients with acute otitis media or tympanic membrane cramps should have a physician consultation before the treatment. So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click on the bell icon so that you get an update whenever I post a video. Also, don't forget to follow me on my Instagram that is official to study. 
I had regularly been posting the questions which appear in your dental board exams. Those questions will help you out and boost your confidence by solving those questions and help you out for preparing for your dental board.